Chuck Coase here. Uh, my, my true name is Shal Kote. Uh, Carlos Costa. <laughs> I got it down in three languages. So right here at Ayahuasca Costa Rica in Cartago, Costa Rica. Um, basically just working with the medicine, receiving people and helping brothers and sisters to grow and, and get clean. And you're listening to Dying Scene Radio. Dying Scene Radio. Yeah, this is our dog, Gracia. She's been sad since last year when her sister died. Oh man. She's kind of a kind of she's looking for something through human beings but not quite finding it. Aww. And she's got some health issues. I have a dog, uh, Enzo, uh-huh. and uh, he's 13 years old. Wow. And he's starting to not be able to, you know, get up on his own on the back legs, you know, and right, he's right. sleeping all the time. Right. It sucks. I know, right? It's but that's the cycle dog. of life, right? It is. And and life is a series of dogs. <laughs> Once one dies, you get another one. That's right. That's one path, right? Well, that's, uh, that's, George, that's, 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 the, the that's not path. my thing or anything. George Carlin took that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're here in Costa Rica. We are, my brother. Indeed. And uh, I'm here with Chuck. And Chuck, you are um, a facilitator in uh, the ayahuasca ceremony here at Ayahuasca Costa Rica. Is that correct? Correct, my brother. Nice. That's what I... I Where the hell is this? Where are we at in Costa Rica right we're now? We're in Cartago, in the province of Cartago, which happens to be the religious center of Costa Rica. Right? So every year, actually, people, uh, pilgrims from all over the country and also all over Central America, actually make the pilgrimage uh, walking. Some, some people walk seven, ten days uh, to get here, down, down here in Cartago, to La Basilica de Los Angeles, which is the main uh, religious center of the country. So yeah, apparently it's a pretty intense and high energy uh, you know, season here. It's in August, so I've never really been here in August myself. And what do you do here at the compound? Well, what does a facilitator of ayahuasca explain that whole role? <laughs> right. So, well, basically, uh, I give the medicine, right? Uh, so, a lot of people who are looking for ayahuasca for themselves, I guess, will be looking for a shaman. For a shaman. They want to go to Peru, right, and do the, the really the traditional path. Um, here, we have a center, which is somehow traditional because a medicine woman, uh, Kuyai, uh, founded the center in 2011. Right, so but now since she she's left, Peruvian, she's Peruvian. She's a fourth generation uh, medicine woman from Peru, and I started drinking with her when I came here at first uh, two years ago. Right, so it sort of just ha- it, it, it so happened to be that she offered me an opportunity to, uh, you know, assist her in the ceremonies to learn how to just give them uh, just assist her, you know, sing the songs with her, and just hold space with her. And at some point, she, uh, when she left, she asked me if I wanted to go ahead and lead the ceremonies, right? So that was kind of a big step for me. Um, so I t- took some time to think about it, you know, talk with my family about it. I had been, you know, drinking and been on this path for a little bit, but not, never as much as, you know, a true shaman, right? I wasn't brought up in this tradition. But I was um, a little bit doubtful at first. But one morning I woke up and I said, yeah, you know, this is going to be the best thing that's ever happened to me. I have this opportunity now to uh, give this, this sacred medicine to my brothers and sisters and, and just be part of their um, path of healing. And yes, so I've, been, I've been doing that ever since. I drank the medicine last night and it had no effect on me. Right. So I wanted to ask you about that because we haven't... We haven't yeah. Done. So yeah, one thing, one thing that I did... Uh, observe is that you you couldn't really keep the medicine down for, for a long too long time, and you're right? supposed to and you told everybody you know at the beginning of the ceremony in both spanish and english uh <laughs> that uh you know you need to hold it down for at least an hour for it right. to have the full effect but right. i couldn't keep it down and i was wondering if that uh, had to do with the fact that i didn't eat anything yesterday maybe i needed to eat some more maybe that's why my stomach was so weak i have no idea but every time i drank it and i drank it three times i know right Kept it down for about 10 minutes and then it was up. How about the third cup? Did you keep it down a little no. bit longer? I mean, I tried to, well, maybe I made 20 minutes possibly or 15, but that was it. And you couldn't possibly hold it? No. Uh-huh. Have well, you ever seen something like that before? Yes. Uh, it's kind of a rare thing. I mean, it's uncommon, I'd say. Most people can usually keep the medicine no problem. Sometimes people vomit a little bit early, but also sometimes people, I just noticed you had a scooching wheel yeah. right now, man. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, that's a whole other thing that you yeah. you, you said, you know, this is for Dying Scene Radio. Obviously, hey, listen, you, you little punk rock uh, people out there. Uh, this is, you know, you, I guess, um, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't like actively tell people that they should uh, partake in ayahuasca, but you're here to facilitate it, right? Right. I mean, this, this, I just wanted to get the word out uh, just to a, another group of demographics. Oh, yeah, that sounds, that sounds like a good plan. Indeed, well, 
I really believe that ayahuasca is something that sort of comes naturally on our path. When we, we maybe learn about it, hear about it for the first time, sometimes it kind of rings a little bell, you know, like, hmm, there's some knowingness, some remembrance of maybe what that is on your path, on the spiritual path, in a way that's difficult to describe, right? Uh, uh, because it's not really logical, right? But some people have that little um, alarm ring, ringing when they hear about it. Maybe they hear about it three times or something in the same year. So mm, we I of, did. Uh-huh, yeah. right? So yeah. we kind of... We kind of um, here believe that it's the plant that is actually reaching out to us in, in, to, to us in a way through the universe reaching out to us through you know human beings telling us about it or maybe we're gonna see it online or something so uh, if one is uh, connected with with one's intention and one's you know feelings and emotions one can sort of uh, capitalize on that and maybe you know well <laughs> start investigating it more so we never really want to push that on anybody you know that's kind of something interesting when someone someone discovers this medicine and what it what it does for oneself one tends to want to share it with you know everybody right but at the same time a lot of people maybe are not ready uh to even consider it or you know so it, it shouldn't be pushed on anybody because it's such a, a sacred medicine and such a it's serious business you know like graham hancock said that mm. when I, graham hancock yeah my joe rogan podcast oh i love joe rogan podcast yeah big and, fan uh, and and i know what you're talking about you're talking about the uh, ted talk right uh i was in, i was referring to one episode where graham hancock was on joe rogan podcast his ted talk is absolutely excellent yeah the war and consciousness i really recommend it in, right. in a, in a big way but the first time i le- i hear heard about ayahuasca was on i was it was but it told graham him to, it, t- it told him he was doing too much uh the weed Right, at some point it did tell him that. Right, and then uh-huh. he stopped smoking so much weed. Uh-huh. That was the one thing that I was hoping wasn't going to happen to me. <laughs> Thank God it didn't. <laughs> I could I smoke weed all day too. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, maybe maybe if you do, uh, it didn't get tell a... me to stop it. <laughs> right, right, yeah, exactly. Well, you know the the connection we have with other um, other master plants. You know, sometimes uh, you know I smoke marijuana, um, but I have been sort of re revisiting my relationship with, with, with marijuana since ayahuasca you know um, I felt like yeah, yeah I felt that I have had sort of visions where ayahuasca was telling me what should be my ideal relationship with marijuana you know I, it's, it's a little bit uh, strange to explain but so that's recognize it as as a sacred plant as something that is actually a tool right something that you can help to expand your own consciousness so that it doesn't become uh, a clutch or you know some just an, another addiction right mm-hmm. people can be addicted to You're right. things right mm-hmm. so um anyways getting back to the graham hancock show that's where i learned about ayahuasca for the first time and he was referring that it was serious business and i totally agree with that it is serious business it's something one should you know um knowingly get into i'll be prepare himself uh, emotionally you know a diet is important but I personally feel that the diet is every time you do something related to the diet every time you take that drop of water you eat that fruit and you're preparing your body you're actually putting a lot of good you know mental and emotional energy in the you know preparing to take it exactly sort of preparing uh, accumulating you know your, your energy yeah um one, well, one, one of uh, one of your um <sighs> What can I call? What can I? One of your my other, helpers, my, one of your other facilitators. Uh-huh. Um, she was saying that uh, that yeah, you have to like kind of work for it, I guess. Or the mother ayahuasca isn't going to give it to you. Maybe right. some. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there's like a yeah, a feeling. Yeah. Intuitively, intuitively, she thinks that might be part of it, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> but. Um, can you tell us? Can you take us through the ceremony, the actual ceremony? Like, what exactly is ayahuasca for the people that don't know, or whatever? Right. Like, what do you do? Like, what do you drink? What is this stuff? Right. So basically, ayahuasca is a is a traditional. It's a brew, right? What it is is the brew. Uh, there is kind of a misunderstanding. People are referring to the plant ayahuasca. I mean, I think traditionally we, we can the the, the traditional uh, people of the uh, Amazon refer to the ayahuasca as the vine, right? Mm-hmm. It's actually the banisteri capi which is the, the vine that people call ayahuasca. It's one part of the ingredient of the brew. It contains a, that's kind of difficult for me, the scientific part to explain, but a, a monoamine inhibitor that allows the body of a human being to process the DMT, the dimethyltryptamine, which is contained in another plant or other plants. For example, here we have a three plant medicine, right? We have the jacruna, which is a traditional DMT containing plant. We also have chalipanga, 
which contains another kind of con configuration of the DMT molecule. So when we combine both these ingredients and we cook it for a long time, uh, it uh, allows the body of a human being to process the DMT. And therefore we go into this you know, journey with the DMT, which people refer to as the spirit molecule, right? As in the documentary or book by Rick Strassman, um, which I recommend. Mm -hmm. So... So that's that's the medicine, right? And this DMT, this is also produced in our own brains when we sleep. Exactly. I mean, I know there's some research that uh, that's. Uh, that but this is what people think. A lot of a lot of re it's not like exactly. Maybe science just doesn't want to sign off on it. Right. I mean, there is some scientific evidence that uh, the, the pineal gland of rats actually produce DMT. I don't. I'm not sure if the, at this point it's been demonstrated for human beings or other you know primates. But uh, I think... I the suspicion is there. Right, exactly. I think it sounds really likely that it's the case. But also it's a molecule that uh, is contained in basically everything, right? In all plant life and we have it in our body. And so it's something very uh, but when But when we normally eat plants, our body can't process it and then process the DMT. But when you combine certain plants, for some reason, it has that inhibitor that allows you... That allows it to like pass through the... Uh, the brain wall or whatever it is. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, what is it? Anyway. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of the limit of my ability to explain it scientifically. I mean, I don't want to be honest. I'm, I'm not really. Uh, my, the blood my, brain my barrier is, or whatever. Right. It right. makes you, it makes it be able to go through the past the blood brain right, barrier. Right. And you get to process the DMT and then you know. Yeah. It transforms. <laughs> it transforms you. Yeah. It kind of mutates you. Now the service that you guys provide, like we uh, we met some interesting folks here uh, who also participated last night when we right. did the ceremony uh there's a couple there's a dad and a son yes. from chicago who yeah. are originally polish yes. and i'm i'm friends with like a lot of polacks so i knew some polish and stuff and okay that was cool talking to them or whatever and uh but but um all these types of people come here and these we rented a car they said that uh, somebody actually will come out and pick you up from the airport if you sure. do contact you and uh you know set up a tell tell everybody about about setting up like a reservation right. here and then how would they get here and all that stuff okay thanks how's it work yeah so I went, most of the most of the people uh, find out about us to, through a friend maybe they came here and uh, or came back and then he refers uh, us to them so basically it's pretty simple I mean we do things pretty small here we have a small temple we never work with more than 12 people in our, in our temple so we like to have some intimacy in the way we do ceremonies and people just call us or send us an email at ayahuascacostarica at hotmail.com right and then set up uh, uh, a retreat we have a whole bunch of retreats every three weeks we have a retreat more or less um i'm actually at the end of my of my um season here i'm going back home in canada next next monday but i have a brother here who will be facilitating in, in my absence with his sister with his actual blood sister so uh we just uh when people get to the airport we just send someone to pick them right away if they want to you know for for, for a, a fee but most i mean it's really up to them basically we just um you know answer um, people's inquiry about their interest in trying the medicine and we try to just make it easy for them to get here and, and try the medicine i mean kuyai she's always taught me and us that the medicine does all the work right so there's kind of a thing about uh, not us not being you know shamans per se but uh, we have a good experience with the medicine it's been tremendously good for us right and we keep drinking it we drink it every two weeks at least we have a good uh you know ceremony together and we also we drink a little bit in ceremonies as well um so uh, going back to the logistics yeah so people just get here and i mean if they if they feel like it's an, it, it's a place where they feel safe to uh you know try the medicine you know when i first tried it myself i, I wanted to, i knew i wanted to try the medicine at some point i just wanted to have a place where i would feel safe a, f a place where it would feel like a safe place for spiritual growth right because it's kind of scary the idea of you know the ayahuasca bit before you you know, when you start researching it people talk about spirits you know light spirit dark spirits all that the stuff. purging the purging you know feeling pretty sick it's kind of a difficult thing you know it's it is difficult it is work we call it the work you know people get down there in the temple and get to work on themselves you know get to see aspects of themselves sometimes it's pretty uncomfortable right um but then again the medicine sort of helps us to um to walk us through the process and if we have faith in ourselves and faith in the medicine right so we also learn how to trust the medicine we also learn how to trust you know spiritual forces you know so it kind of requires us to be flexible in our belief system and our belief system changes uh working with this medicine i know my belief systems have really changed a great deal so when i get down there now it's really about emotional cleansing for me i connect i feel like i have sort of i meet the medicine halfway and she meets me halfway 
and uh, because at first I had my first experiences were the deep metaphysical revelations, right? I would have deep visions and literally go through wormholes and travel into you know different spaces. And I saw my past lives. I, I saw before I was a human being for the first time that already existed. I was some part of part of some mineral life form, and then before that I saw that I existed as just love. I was just the energy of love, and I always existed. You know, so I, this is serious stuff, right? And when I came in contact with all this remembrance, without a doubt, like that was for sure like a true experience. It felt true to me, right? So that really changed my belief systems. Now, for me, reincarnation is something that's it's very kind of normal for me to think about, and I kind of now have more flashbacks about past lives. Now, it's kind of difficult to describe, but you know, I kind of get sometimes flashes of some of my past lives, uh, not in detail, but in, 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 in emotional rem remembrance, I would say. So, because of all these things, people sometimes get a little, right, like, oh, we shouldn't mess with the, this kind of stuff. But what we believe in here is that, I mean, there's this uh, necessity for us to wake up quickly, right, human beings. So, I feel that's why the plant is kind of spreading its tentacles all over the globe, now actually coming out of its natural basin of the Amazon and, and coming here in Costa Rica. And I'm pretty sure now there's center of ayahuasca, ayahuasca centers all, the, all over the globe, you know? And that's a good thing. I believe that's a good thing. Some people, more, more purists, will say, no, you need to go there and, and connect with the origin of the plant. And that's a valid point, I believe. But then again, we, the medicine is making itself available through human beings, right? It's, it's traveling through, you know, travelers. And then... Um, the internet. The internet. Podcasts. Exactly. Podcasts, exactly. How many times have you done it? Um, I guess I've, I might have connected with the medicine about 30 times. But I count. I only God, you're addicted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Listen, it, it makes total sense that you love punk rock, uh, yeah. that you're going back to Canada. When yeah. are you coming back from Canada? When does the season start? Um, I mean, the season is kind of all year long, but I guess the, the high season is. Oh, oh it's okay. So. The high season is, uh, you know, Christmas time and uh, the winter in North America, which is cool. I guess it's when people travel more outside. And. So yeah, but are you originally from Canada? I'm from Canada. I'm French Canadian, actually. I'm from Quebec. Really? Yes. Oh, nice. Yes. That's awesome, man. So, th like I said, that makes perfect sense that you like punk rock, because <laughs> you mentioned when I, you know, when I was telling you about the show and everything like that, that yeah. it's a punk rock show, and I mentioned some of the, you know, people that we've highlighted. You knew all of them. Uh -huh. Can you tell me about your your uh, background in punk? Oh man, I would love to. That's actually the first time <laughs> someone asks asked me that in my whole life. <laughs> Since, I'm, since I knew that was a teenager, right? So, you know, I guess uh, we, I, had, I have a bunch of friends that are still my friends. I, I knew them. I've known them since I've, I'm five years old and in a small town in Quebec, right? And then we just uh, merged uh, together. All, I, I had all these, you know, experiences, experimented with some, some drugs, you know. And then um, we sort of formed a band, you know, when we were 12, I guess. And we started playing some punk rock because that's... I mean, I was born in 81, right? So that was my scene. I was born in 80. 80, right? So that's exactly the same thing. When's your birthday, man? Uh, May 4th. May 4th, okay. Yes. All right. May 4th, 1981. <laughs> I'm a tourist. I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so basically we just, uh, you know, we figured out, okay, you're going to play the guitar, you're going to play the bass, you're going to play the... So I was going to play Do you the believe drum. in astrology? Uh, yeah, I believe it's a valid system. It's so complex that I, I, I don't really understand. Do you, do you believe that there is, like, some kind of weird thing where people have, like, uh, just basic basic like similarities in their personalities yes i do, I do too I and I've, I've, I've just from recognize that yeah just from recognizing and meeting people and stuff. right like you're meeting you you get today you know spending some time with you and yeah, yeah, yeah. feeling the vibe you know the, the tourist vibe well i'm like an aries thing. oh you're an aries okay. yeah <laughs> so i'm off there <laughs> <laughs> yeah we but butt close. heads we butt heads uh -huh. sometimes uh -huh. but it's okay yeah. getting, getting back to the punk rock yeah right so yeah, so basically I, I was sort of established I was going to play the drums. We all bought instruments and we started playing, you know, some covers, uh, you know, some of the bands you mentioned, you know, Pennywise, uh, you know, FX, uh, Screeching Weasel, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, when, when, when I was, you know, 15, 16, the, you know, My Right, that album. Oh was, my God. Uh, yeah. It was really big that. in, 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 in my, in my group, you know. When I interviewed Ben Weasel, that was like the big thing that uh, people started finding out about the podcast uh -huh. because he doesn't do press. All right. Okay. Yeah, and I just like persistently kept on contacting him, and I eventually he got. He says he doesn't suffer fools, so I feel good that he granted me the the interview. Actually, right. what yeah. does that mean? Though doesn't suffer fools. Doesn't suffer fools. Like if you're stupid, he doesn't want to deal with you. Okay, right. He doesn't take any shit from anybody. He's like, no, yeah, he doesn't deal with stupidity. Okay, that sounds like it. So I was like, all right, good, thanks. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> all right, he recognized some kind of intelligence there. And then granted me the interview, but uh -huh. but these guys like yeah they're all my you know these are people I grew up listening to yes all these bands that you're saying and uh, I love it absolutely 
so I didn't have like a big career or anything but with my band we know we kind of toured a little bit around the region where I'm from and uh, got to be somehow uh, have some small recognition it was just a great bounding experience you know I love these brothers forever and then what we did the energy we put out in the shows and everything you know I recognize it now as a deeply spiritual thing you know I was a I was a desire to express oneself and we did that as a, as a brotherhood right so that's the spirit of the brotherhood so when we do something together here with um, a, a, a common intention it's much stronger and that's kind of the, what a, the thing I'm trying to recreate and I'm recreating here you know bringing some brothers here so like we don't have like a traditional shamanic center you know it's a brotherhood here you know a sisterhood people come here uh and we just I, I, i really make an effort to just you know be myself with people who come here so i'm i'm clear about where i am on my process on my path with the medicine right i have been working with the medicine for so long but i was offered an opportunity to give the medicine right and i and i and i embraced it but i'm just a, a dude right uh, i'm 34 years old i'm doing my thing i have a farm back home i'm doing some organic farming with my dad and my sister You know, I love you guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to go back home. I want to build a center there, a temple, and offer the medicine to my community. But I do it in the in the feel in the in the style of a community, right? Um, we have a lot of vets coming here, a lot of vets from the you know the, the military, and also I have this vision that I want to get and see that community. I have that. So I had a brother here who came here and talked to me about his vision, and when he was describing that, I had such an excitement that I had never felt for years. So it was something in my vision, right? You so, want other people to experience it. Yes, but in the military community, people who come from the... PTSD? From, exactly. We had a lot of veterans coming here. They required a lot of help, right? And this medicine is very effective for them. So that's kind of a message I want to put out there, right? Some veterans, maybe you guys have been deceived by the medical system. Um, and if maybe you're willing... Opiates. To, I know these guys are courage. Just, these guys have courage, right? I kind of saw, I saw in a vision what people from the military do on a spiritual level when people want to get into the military and get into service i kind of understand spiritually what that means right i think these people are being um their intentions is hijacked through a system that is dece deceiving right deceitful but i understand kind of the the main thing of the warrior the path of the warrior through military right through service so you guys might have might have been deceived by the system so when you do realize that and you want to come back to healing you want to connect with mother nature again and get some healing well the ayahuasca might be something very very good for you and here we have a lot of people coming back and i feel like if we can spread that message and the medicine in that community that's going to create a big shift that's going to spread like wildfire because people uh, pay attention to what the troops say to veterans when they, they when they speak about it so um you know what i mean this is going to resonate loud so i really want to put that message out there for the troops uh we understand what you guys are doing um and then You will always be welcome here in this in this center. Um, or you'll be welcomed by the medicine, and there's great healing available for you guys. You know. Thank you, Chuck. I really appreciate the interview, man. Thank you for having us out here. Man, thanks. Even though it didn't totally. I mean, maybe it worked on me, and I just don't realize it. I don't right. know. Can we just make an, an outro about that? Yes. So uh, sometimes the medicine, at first, it kind of needs to get into the body physically a little bit, right? When someone vomits, I mean, the medicine's coming out, right? So it's, it's, there's no mistake, right? It comes out, it, it needs to come out. So maybe I feel like the energy I was feeling from you last, uh, last night is that you were getting some physical cleanse. Sometimes people, it takes three to four ceremonies to actually get the, the more, the deeper emotional connection or the spiritual connection. Sometimes it's really just the physical cleanse for the first times. It happens, you know? Uh, so I think that, that's what might have happened to you. And, I mean, if you if you uh, if you want to try it again, you can always come back. And uh, at some point, if you keep working with this medicine, you'll you'll get you know what it does on a on a deeper level. But even as you said, sometimes as well, it works in a very subtle way. So actually, some of the there might be some fine adjustments being done right now that you might not be aware right now. The clarity will come a little bit later. I'm really fucked up. <laughs> no, nah, you look like a big sweetheart <laughs> to me. Thank you, man. You are too. Hey, let's uh let's let's hug it out. Absolutely, my brother. I love you.